Welcome back our viewers. Today in a section of GMU Agenda, we try to draw an insight in the education sector of Uganda. Now, the motto or the catchment of the Ministry of Education is quality education. But today the question is, is education actually quality or we have sought for quantity? In studio with me today we have Gilbert Sendugwa, the Executive Director of Africa Freedom of Information Center to draw a simple insight into what is actually the fate of Uganda's education. You're welcome, Mr. Sendugwa. Thank you very much, uh, Felix. Good morning, dear viewers. Yes, uh, Mr. Sendugwa, today our viewers want to understand the stagnancy state of education in Uganda. The question is, the private sector is moving so fast, yet the government sector is lagging behind. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Felix, and good morning once again, viewers. It is true that um, um, the public sector has been expanding, especially in terms of public investment. The government has been spending money to build infrastructure. It has recruited more teachers. Uh, but at the same time, we observe um, things that are not understandable. Uh, for example, um, while uh, government expenditure in this uh, sector has been going up, we don't seem to see uh, improvement in performance. When you look at the grades of, uh, of children in public schools, especially in, in northern Uganda, you see that um, the performance is actually very weak. But also we see something which is uh, uh, not clear, that in almost all the government schools, you don't see children of teachers, uh, children of administrators being enrolled in these public schools. All of them are in private schools. So the question is why? Because normally what happens is, the question our viewer has is, they want to understand what could be the problem. Is it the teachers? Is it the schools? Is it the government? Or is it the students? What could be the big problem? Yes, this is an important question because also we've looked at uh, what private schools uh, in these local districts uh, pay, what private schools pay, what public schools pay. Uh, we, s we observe the following, that teachers in government schools actually earn higher, almost double what uh, private teachers earn. But, and also, we are informed that teachers in private schools uh, during a holiday are not paid. In some private schools also, this pay does not come on time. Now, in the government, uh, you have better pay, and uh, it is regular, and all the, the, the 12 months, but also, it comes on time, it is predictable. It's How come that private schools, you know, things are not stable, the pay is weak, but- Still perform better. They still perform better. Now the question, Mr. Andugua, I would also want to pose to you again. When you, when, 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 you, when you make a statement like government employees in particular schools are paid better, our viewer wants to understand, we have had enormous challenges, we have had enormous strikes, uh, campaigns against government, is this, and this a mis, uh, is it true or, or is this reflection of dissatisfaction of the teachers in the government? Because you have had, they have they want salary increase always. They strike their of, uh, failure to pay and uh, timely payment. Do you think it is uh, it speaks truth? Because when you realize payment of particular private schools, I think it may double payment of some uh, government uh, teachers. And if all is well in this sector, why do they have to come out consequently? Okay, the thing is that uh, uh, the uh, cost of living has generally gone up uh, in the country. If you look at uh, what parents pay for um, education, is ac actually very high. And if these teachers are taking their children to those private schools, so you'd expect that they need more too. Uh, the food has gone up and, and, uh, many, and, all that. and uh, they well, have to, to also, also to something also very important uh, for us to understand is that now, we have seen government invest a lot of money in the 
primary living, uh, what you call the UPS uh, project. But the fruits of the same are not quite adequate. There have, there's been failure to strike a leverage, the input and the output. Yes, that's true. I mean, I wanted to make a comment that uh, it is true that while the cost of living has gone up, and while the, um, the private sector pays less, but the component actually doesn't, uh, teachers are not saying that we get, um, the, our colleagues in private sector are paid higher. What they seem to be complaining about is that within the public sector, within government sector, the pay is not rationalized. So within the same government, you find you know, some to be, seem to be paid so higher, while others in government seem to be discriminated against. And I think those are the arguments they have been making. Now, what could be done to address uh, some of these uh, problems? We see um, government has set up uh, accountability measures in, uh, to oversee the public sector. For example, you have school management committees, you have um, sub-county councils, you have district councils, all doing monitoring to ensure that there is value for money for what government pays for. But Mr. Ndugwa, just on that particular point, when you talk about all these committees, we have never seen a committee come out with a comprehensive approach to remedy the scourging situation of education in Uganda. Are they just paper tigers? Yes. I mean, our, our study, we looked at uh, also the functionality of these structures. We found actually that um, while they're in place, they're not functional. They have not been trained on their role and mandate and how to exercise it. And yet there's continued remuneration of the same people. Yes, some of yes. them. Yeah. And then uh, number two, where there is an effort and they try and, uh, and uh, do their work and report, these reports are never used for anything by those who are supposed to take action on this. We also found a situation where councillors are given what they call monitoring allowance. But we asked uh, copies of these reports, their monitoring reports, and uh, we actually were told that these reports do not exist. So we asked ourselves. That means there is no monitoring. Yes, there is no monitoring, but it's paid for. So then, which uh, affects the, the performance of these schools. We also actually tried to um, get information about uh, inspections by uh, district uh, um, uh, education inspectors. Now, also these ones don't exist, you know. Uh, they are not in place. Yes, and uh, the access to information uh, actually makes this information public. So we're interested to really try and understand if inspections have taken place can we have a look at the copies of the reports, what were their findings, the what were the recommendations? Uh, we asked, inquired from schools when inspectors were last in schools. Yes, uh, in a number of cases, there had not been an inspector in the last eight months. Uh, in others, inspection had taken place, and that's where we're interested to see what were the findings and what were the recommendations, and if those recommendations have been implemented. Okay. Mm -hmm. Away from that, uh, Mr. Sendugwa, one of the biggest challenges we are having today is that the ratio, we have the ratio of students vis-a-vis -vis the teachers is also worrying. Mm -hmm. It speaks a lot about the staffing of schools. You realize when you go to a school, you have a ratio of at least not less than 100 our pupils to one teacher perhaps. What comments do you make of the staffing endeavors of government, perhaps the Ministry of Education? Actually the schools which we visited we found high enrollment at the lower level, P1, P2, P3, but as you go up uh, enrollment really declines uh, greatly. And uh, actually this maybe points to um, the fall in expectation of of, uh, of parents that as children attend school, maybe uh, according to the assessment of parents, they don't uh, see the learning outcomes coming up. And I think they can then go for solutions outside. So enrollment is high at, uh, from P1 to P3, but then it goes drastically down as you go P4 uh, to P7. And I think government should take interest in this area. Uh, 
this, uh, there is a school where we went at 11 and we found a particular teacher had signed attendance for afternoon. Already? Already. So um, to us, this was an in a clear indication that, um, that uh, this teacher most likely was not going to attend in the afternoon. So um, the issue of absenteeism, what the government is paying for, uh, you can be a certain, like in that case, that most likely is not getting value for, for, for the for money that. and the input. Now, I think the head teacher and deputies are the first inspectors at that school. But if you find in their office, they attendance book well. at 11 is signed already for afternoon, then it means that uh, uh, supervision is compromised at that, at that level. Because now that you mentioned the, the concept of dropouts, do the number of dropouts in schools and the deteriorating number of students who are able to complete academics, maybe the elementary level, does it prove the wanting or the failure of putting in structures sustainable measures to see a fine product or a fine academic product? Okay, I wouldn't want to say that uh, um, they drop out. I suspect that when they don't get value from public schools, then they go to private schools. Because normally, Mr. The, 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 the concept would be that it is not easy to have a child from a, pri a government school cross to a private school. Most of the times, you realize that people who, let's, let's take the child in Guru, mm. the northern part of Uganda, where the parents may not necessarily have the monetary enforcement to take mm. them to private schools. Do they, sh can we be ascertained that regardless of enjoying private services, can they thoroughly go through the process of government schools and we have a fine product? Yeah, the thing is that, uh, yes, for people who can afford to pay when the service is poor, then they go for it where they can get it the at a reasonable pay. For those who are not able to pay, unfortunately, they don't have alternatives so when they are frustrated with uh, you know lack of service or a poor service then the consequence is that they will likely drop out of this of the school because they know if i stay for seven years uh, this is wasted investment so i will let me uh, invest this effort elsewhere. Maybe you find children uh, in your child labor, you find people farming, uh, farming or in markets, in uh, hawking in towns and those kinds of things. So the issue of uh, quality needs to be addressed and especially getting the most from what is already paid for. Strengthen inspe inspections, increase um, train the local accountability structures, especially the school management committees, increase public access to information so that every parent knows that in this school, we have this number of teachers and they're supposed to be there from this time to that time. And with that information, uh, parents then can be empowered you know, to ensure that children, I mean teachers are in school when they are required to do that because the children go back home every day. So if the teacher has missed, they can inform the parents and then the parents can Interest ask themselves. Can ask why was my pupil not, tra uh, not uh, taught. taught yesterday? And there should be, this system should be, there should be some uh, responsiveness from uh, the government. A bit far from that, but much more related. We look at the concept of information. Mm. There's a big gap where well, we have information flow being antagonized and it may not reach its preferred destination. Mm. We have the ministry, we have a student, we have teachers, we have committees that you mentioned earlier. One of the biggest challenges in the education sector is information flow. What would be your comment? Yes, this is true. Um, the parliament in 2005 passed the Access to Information Act, but unfortunately this has not been implemented whether at uh, the ministry level, whether at the uh, district level or lower levels. And I'll give examples. Uh, there are certain records which are required by law to be put in place. Public For example, 
every public institution must provide information without being asked or no, the information they have. The law says index of records. They are supposed to make annual reports to parliament through their ministers on how, uh, what information they have provided to the public and where it has been refused. The minister is required to explain to parliament why that information has been provided. Now, all this is not being done. So, therefore, the consequence is that uh, if government has sent money to a school, parents will not know that uh, the government has received, has sent this amount of money to do this uh, work. When the head teacher has made an accountability, the school management committee and the parents will not know. We have a case, for example, where the chairperson of school management committee was doubting what accountability had been submitted to the district by the, uh, the head teacher of that school. So following our training on access to information, this uh, uh, chairperson made an information request for this uh, accountability. And she actually found that what the head teacher had uh, reported was fake, was um, false accountability. And I want to believe that uh, this was not limited to this uh, school. Yes. It must be an it's issue that, uh, that is spread to all schools. So government actually needs to pay interest in uh, implementing the Access to Information Act because it will empower people to hold uh, those people whom government has hired to account so that everything that government has paid for is delivered as expected. Do you think if we improved supervisory methods, both at national level, district, sub-county, parish levels, in relation to education, would have a total overhaul into a better education structure in Uganda? Definitely. Uh, the, um, the quality of service is an outcome or the functionality of the delivery of that service and the, uh, uh, how that service is provided. So there is no question about that. The issue is the affordability of that supervision. Now, if you invest in supervision that is, comes from the center, that an inspector has to drive from the ministry to maybe Arua, the remotest school in Arua, for example, it means that government has already paid a lot of money for this person to be able to reach that particular school to supervise. Now, if that is to be done for every school, it will be too expensive and maybe unaffordable. So you have to look at uh, affordable mechanisms, and these have to be local. Can the schools, can the, every parent have information on what is expected of a school at that particular school? Now, that information has not been provide <coughs> sorry, provided to the parents. Number two, they have not been empowered. Article 38 of the Constitution actually uh, guarantees uh, citizens the right to participate. And one of the ways to participate is actually to supervise the services that the government is providing. So by providing information and, and uh, assuring the parents and communities that it is their role to supervise government work, it can make a whole big difference. And then, when the inspectors come from the center, whether from the district or from uh, the, the, the ministry, they should be uh, focusing on the local accountability structures, go to the school management committees and ask, what did you observe? Rather than going to the school and driving back, I think that mechanism can help to improve the performance of, of the sector. That is wonderful. Now you, you talked about the concept of accountability. Normally, if we seek to understand accountability, I would want to ask or pose a question to you. Who do you think is to blame in this equation? We have the government, we have the stakeholders, which would be the students, the parents, and the communities. Who has not done their work? Okay, first of all, um, the message has to come from the top leadership of government. Very clear that every worker in the government is a servant of the citizen. There should be no question about that. Now, once that is explained, 
then teachers and school administrators will know that we have a duty to account to the local citizen who has entrusted us with their child. Now, if the communities see teachers and head teachers as bosses, as their bosses, then they cannot question, they cannot demand accountability. So uh, the top leadership of government should you know, send this message clear and make it clear to everyone who is employed by government that the citizen is your boss. And this should not be only in uh, words, but in action. And that's why I'm saying that the inspectors, when they go to inspect, they should not focus more on schools. They should go to the local accountability structures, yes. the health unit management committees, the school management committees, and say, are these teachers and school administrators accountable to you? What do you observe? What information have you been, have you been given? Have you raised any questions and you have not been satisfied by the responses that you have been given? Have you made any recommendations and the school management has not implemented? And I think by doing that, then it will tilt because the school administrators will know that the inspectors are looking to the population. Okay. And then, therefore, we must satisfy the population and our parents in the way we do our things. Do you think this is a widespread problem or is it a regional problem? Do we have some particular parts of Uganda appreciating good demeanor towards academy, uh, academics or is it a general problem? You may say we have, we may find that uh, the northern region, the eastern region have failed, but maybe the central region. Do we have particular places where your studies informed better compliances? Okay, we did the baseline study on uh, the implementation of access to information, uh, and we found that this, um, the lack of implementation cuts across the whole country. Uh, this recent study we have finished of uh, assessing accountability structures, which has covered 15 districts in northern Uganda, has also found that actually uh, the structures are not function across the 15 districts. So I think, I want to believe that uh, this problem is not limited to regions uh, or particular districts, but it's something that, is, uh, that cuts across the country and sectors. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the last questions we would want to handle. What is the recommendation that you came out with throughout the study? What recommendations yes. do you give both to government and all other stakeholders, the parents and communities? So um, our major finding is that, uh, uh, is that government is making efforts, but these efforts are not producing the outcomes as desired. Now, the problem is that uh, those that are mandated to oversee do not have information that they need for them to oversee the work of government. That was one of our key findings. So our recommendation is that Access to Information Act should be implemented. And by doing that, everyone will have access to public information. And once they have this information, they will use it to make sure that the service that the government has paid for is delivered as expected. When uh, this information is held by only a few, then there's going to be problems. So uh, we strongly recommend that uh, the Access to Information Act be implemented across uh, the all government uh, agencies. Number two, we recommend that accountability structures, especially those at the district, sub county and community level, should be urgently trained on their roles and mandate. And by doing that, the, the, the performance of this structure is going to be better and uh, this will help uh, performance of our schools and services to improve uh, greatly. Thank you, Mr. Sendugwa. Thank you so much, our viewers. Education is a key concept of development, both for all grown countries and even third world countries. We believe that if our education systems are made better, we shall have a better Uganda. Good morning. Thank you for watching GMU Agenda. Thank you.